my god! Oh my god! Are we doing DUIs? Well, we're gonna check real quick. We're right? just gonna we check. Some complaints that it's not like alcohol. Oh, I'm seeing like that guy Welcome to US, Corrupt Cops, where we uncover the truth. In our latest video, we expose three cases of corrupt cops ambushing innocent individuals. It's a stark reminder of the need for accountability. Join us in our fight for justice. Register like and share this video to make a difference. If you like this video, press 1. On February 8, 2020, Valdosta police officer Rachel Hinton went to a Walgreens pharmacy for a non-emergency call and arrested a man with an outstanding warrant. Other officers were told to check the west side of the building for someone asking customers for money. Officer Henry saw Antonio Smith walking away from the Walgreens and approached him, asking for ID. Smith showed his ID, confirming what he was doing. It's about uh, suspicious ac activity, man. Suspicious activity? What? Where, where, where about? They said they got someone. Can't view that camera. They told, I told next them what to I was doing. Oasis signs right here next to the uh, El Rodeo. I told them what I was doing. I was waiting for, I was waiting for my sister, the Western Union, me some money. I always go there and get Western Union, and uh, they know me. Hey, you got your ID on you? Yes, I got my ID. As Mr. Smith extracts his ID, Sergeant Wheeler and several others arrive on the scene. Sergeant Wheeler stealthily approaches Mr. Smith from behind and promptly seizes his arms. Contrary to the police report, Mr. Smith had not been informed at any point prior that he was under arrest or instructed to place his hands behind his back. What are you guys doing? Uh, while here investigating some suspicious activity, well, sir. I, I'm not doing anything. I've been around cameras, so I ain't, I ain't been doing nothing. Hi. Right. So what were you doing over there at well, the Walgreens? I'm waiting, on, waiting on for Western Union. Call my sister right now. She's huh? in Florida. You have a cell phone caller. Don't call, call me who? Like this. Call my sister in Florida. Don't, don't do this. What are you doing? Oh my Put God! What are you doing? Put your hands behind your back, your behind behind your back. back like you told. Put your what, hands. What are you doing? Due to Mr. Smith being forcefully slammed to the ground and rendered incapable of using his arms to mitigate the impact upon landing, he suffered a fractured left wrist. Oh my wrist! Oh my God! Stop! Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he might be. Even though Sergeant Wheeler noticed that Mr. Smith had a broken wrist, he persisted in handcuffing him and pinning him to the ground for a brief period before releasing his wrist. Sergeant Wheeler then informed Mr. Smith that he was under arrest due to a warrant, but Officer Henry intervened, clarifying that Mr. Smith was merely an innocent bystander walking down the street and had no connection to the initial cause for police intervention. You have a warrant for police. Hey. This was a, oh, they got, they got with the warrants over there. Oh, what do you Huh? No, there's two different people. Because they pointed this guy out to me. Mr. Smith is approached by Officer Henry without being suspected of any crime. Their initial interaction seems voluntary. Despite lacking any valid reason, Officer Henry asks Mr. Smith for identification. Legal advice would suggest Mr. Smith should have refused to provide any information. Furthermore, Officer Henry only checks Mr. Smith's name after they've already interacted, indicating that the encounter wasn't based on any suspicion related to Mr. Smith specifically. They got the guy with a, with a warrant. This guy, I had just got contact with him. I'm just No, that's why I was trying to No, because there's two different people. That's why I was trying to figure out if I had missed something, he told him to put his hands behind his back. Because they pointed this guy out too. The people at the store pointed him out also. I didn't tell me something. I thought he was the one with the warrant. No, well, I thought I had missed something. He told him to, to put his hands behind his back. That's why I thought I had missed something. Because because it's two different people. Because they, because they, they just pointed this guy out to me. Who did? In reference to what? Reference to whatever was going on over there. They said this is the guy, but apparently there's another guy over there too. Because the lady. They wanted CT on him as well. I don't know. I had, I hadn't even asked. They just said right there, right there, right there. Okay. So confused. Wait, wait. Okay, so he's not the one with the warrant. No. 
Yeah. No, apparently he has a warrant. So, so whenever they were talking to him, Swartz said, hey, come over here and see if there's another guy. Because that guy said, hey, there's another guy also. So when I walk on the side of the store, people are there like, that guy, that guy, that guy. I was like, hey, he's walking through the Red Roof Inn. What so I, I thought this was the guy that they were calling about. Because oh. he said, because that guy said he's not the one that, that had to call him. They said, he said it was this guy. So whenever he was walking down, I was like, all right, well, I went back to go grab my car. And I, and I got him stopped here. And then he was like, hey, put your hands on your back. And I thought I, I, that I had missed something. Actually, how oh. God. As the officers grasp the reality of the situation, they permit Mr. Smith to rise to his feet as they await rescue. We got an ambulance coming, okay? You don't want to talk to the ambulance? Um, oh my God. Hold on, sir, sir, just sir. one second, one second, one second. Okay. Can, can you just can you just hang out and let ambulance look no, at you? I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, oh, just give me one second. Let me let me talk to somebody real quick. Hurry up. Okay, and I'll be right back. I'll talk Hurry to you. Okay. Right. You don't you don't want to wait. No. You, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm looking. They're going to come in there. If you, I guess if you want to cancel with them, you can. Are you? Yeah, you want to back in your pocket? Or? Uh, here, put your pocket. Yeah. Can you explain to you what was happening, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard the whole thing. Okay. Uh, you don't want to wait for the EMS? Mm -mm. No. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. All right. Mr. Smith, fearing further mistreatment, declined medical attention initially, but later sought care and was found to have arm fractures. He sued the city of Valdosta, several officers, the mayor, the police chief, and city council members for $700,000. The mayor defended the police, refusing internal disciplinary action and neglecting to apologize to Mr. Smith. A year later, the city settled for $350,000 and agreed to establish a citizen's review board. Sergeant Wheeler faced no consequences due to qualified immunity, leaving taxpayers to fund his pension. This case exposed unequal treatment in the justice system. On December 30th, 2022, around 5 p.m., Theodore Donnie and his girlfriend were driving home. While they were stopped at a traffic light, their car was unexpectedly hit from behind. Donnie exits the vehicle to assess the damage, and both parties pull over to a side street. The man who collided with them claims he's an officer with Salt Lake City. Donnie notices the man acting strangely, possibly intoxicated. As they discuss the damage, the man grows agitated and hostile, prompting Donnie to dial 911 to request police assistance. I get uh, caught to... Where are we the, the common sense common, by the mall? Common sense by the Ogden Mall. The guy says he's a cop. All right, I'll go ahead and pass along with the cop throughout. Thanks. The responsible party is Salt Lake City Police Officer Thomas Cagle. Officer Cagle coincidentally has a prior employment history with the Ogden City Police Department, the agency currently handling the situation. Following a tense altercation, the couple retreats to their vehicle. A piece of shit. Donnie is caught between vehicles after moving them to clear a store's driveway. Instead of helping, Officer Cagle does nothing to assist Donnie, despite his girlfriend's pleas. It's only when Donnie's girlfriend takes action herself by driving their vehicle forward that Donnie is freed. Onlookers hurried to assist and to restrain Officer Kegel from Donnie. Paramedics arrived shortly thereafter and Donnie was swiftly transported to the hospital. The Ogden Police Department also showed up at the scene. Donnie reached out to me directly almost immediately following the incident, and I've been collaborating with him over the past few months to obtain the body cam footage from the involved departments. ABC News received the footage within days of the incident. It took us almost two months to get the videos released by the Riverdale Police, but the Ogden Police Department still refuses to release their records, citing an exemption due to an ongoing investigation. This is despite the fact that Donnie, who is the victim, is the one requesting the records. 
Additionally, they passed off the investigation to another department because Officer Kegel had previously worked with them. As a result, the Riverdale Police Department took over the investigation on scene and arrived 30 minutes after the collision to find Officer Kegel sitting alone in his truck. He seemed heavily oh, intoxicated, yeah. but the, um, the witness said that he was shoving a bunch of gum and spraying cologne on himself as he was sitting in his okay. car. What was his name? Tommy um, Kegel. Tommy. <laughs> <sighs> hey Tommy. Yeah. Can you come out and talk to me real quick? Yeah, hang on just a sec. Let me give you a call back. Yeah, you know how it is, man. Okay, so we got someone to come talk to you, okay? I'm just pissed off that I thought I threw it in park. Sure. And it went in reverse, or not reverse, but it went in neutral. Mm -hmm. And it's not get it back into gear. Yeah, I don't know what the hell. Man. After a brief chat, the Ogden police officers depart, and the Riverdale police step in. DUIs. Well, we're gonna check real quick. We're just gonna check complaints. That, I mean, it's not like alcohol. So, like I said, you know how it all goes. Right? Yeah. So, there's. Do you smell alcohol on me? I haven't really got close up to smell okay. anything. But, right, yeah. Yeah. you know how it goes, right? Yeah. Else. The Riverdale Police Department has started administering field sobriety tests on Officer Kegel, even though they aren't mandated by law. Officer Kegel consents to undergo these tests while another officer begins questioning witnesses. Multiple individuals reported that Officer Kegel was hostile and threatening to fight bystanders. They continuously mentioned that he was a police officer armed and smelled strongly of alcohol. During the altercation, and uh, it sounds like this family over here came over to check if they were okay. Driver so, one, and then son there in the blue sweatshirt. Witnesses? Yeah, but it sounds like one of them may have gotten hit. Uh, one of the witnesses? One of the witnesses got hit? The father was saying something about his son getting hit. Oh, I think you, I think there were threats, but I don't think you got punched. I'll double check okay. though. Yeah. I told him, sir, can you please get back in your car? I don't, I don't want anybody to start a fight today. He basically says, make me. Okay. And starts, and as he said, gets in my face. And being the protective dad that he is, he tells him to, to back off of me, and he pops off. Well, I'm armed. Like, so yeah, that's real fun on. to say that. Did he ever uh, show the weapon, pull yeah, it no, out, anything like that? Okay. Did he make any type of threats? Yeah, he threatened to kick my ass. Okay. Did that's he? Like, ha so was it just like threatening, like, hey, I'm gonna yeah, kick your ass, or like, is there any need, more specifics? He, he kept telling me, you need to back the fuck up. You need to back up. I'm a cop, so I don't give a shit if you come. Don't get in a 16 year old's face. Okay. He's a minor. Yeah. You want to deal with it? You deal with me. He, he didn't raise no fist. I just know that. Just all kind of as soon, yeah. I just know as soon as he got in my face and he said one word, I smelled this off. Alcohol. Okay. All right. That truck leaks about. Nothing but alcohol. I'm literally he sitting over there trying to help the girl okay. calm her down doing this. Despite Officer Cagle's assertion that he was armed while searching the vehicle, the officers did not discover any gun. However, they did uncover prescription medications, including Xanax, painkillers, and a sleeping aid. Got a bunch of prescriptions back here. Another officer brings up discovering two sealed bottles of alcohol. The whiskey, are we taking those or leaving them? Uh, just gonna leave them. You might want them, I guess. So two bottles of whiskey, three pairs of sunglasses, several canisters of two. He wants the two. Why don't you grab all of those? Okay, got two. Shortly after confirming Officer Cagle's dismal performance on the field sobriety test, he is arrested for DUI. We face that way for me, just based on the test, okay? Oh, go ahead and move your hands apart. Copy. So I'm going to take you back to my station, okay, and we'll go kind of go from there, all right? Did you say how much did you say you had to drink tonight? Uh, so I went, I only had, I can fucking show you, like a taster shot over at, um, I don't even know what it's called. It's a place that makes Porter's Fire. Porter's what? Porter's Fire. Not familiar with it. And they 
give you only a tiny bit to try so okay. you can drive after. Okay. So, I'll go on the other side. Some of the Ogden guys said that you told them you had a firearm. Is that in your truck? Or do you not have it with you? I believe I left it at home. You left it at home? Okay. He is then transported to the Riverdale Police Department. Okay. So it's not enough to give you any type of impairment at all. Okay. Well, hopefully nothing will come of it, but, you know. Automatically, I'd give you a DUI for sure. Well, it wouldn't be automatically. we got to be able to prove it, right? <laughs> yeah, I was in the wrong Say, some people just get worked up real easy, you know? Throughout the remainder of the investigation, Officer Cagle exhibited no indication of remorse or concern for the man he pinned between two vehicles. In fact, he appeared more preoccupied with the damage to his truck and the potential impact on his career than with the serious injury he inflicted on another person. Tonight? Yeah. Right. No, because you got to do the letter whole thing. You got to get the impound release, and you got to get all that stuff taken care of. Sorry. Is there anything that I can get out of my? Vehicle? Yeah, whatever you need out of there, I can get out of there for you. Okay. Um, I just went shopping. Okay, so. That's what I was doing. We'll read that in a second. What all do you need out of there? So groceries. They're all shopping stuff. Just, is it shopping stuff? Shopping so like all the shopping bags out of there? Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the hell in there? On my dip, for sure. Okay. I'm just gonna be pissed if Salt Lake f***ed me over with only a few years left. No. You know, you know the, the standard questionnaire. Right, all, right. Right? Are you wanting to do those? Or do you want to have a lawyer present with you? Um, I'm not going to be mad at you either way. It's up to you. It's, yeah. It's your own shit. Probably a lawyer. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Just to save yeah. my job. I'm not going to be booked into jail tonight, right? Um, I'm hoping not, but I haven't heard from the boss what we want to do yet. All right. All right, I'll, I'll talk to him. Just because, honestly, I don't typically, unless I don't typically book somebody, on a DUI, if it's like a first offense or if right. it's multiple, right? But okay, you, you gotta understand right. though, too, from I mean, both our situations, right? It's a very scrutinizable thing. Who is your supervisor tonight? Uh, Sergeant Pippen. Okay, so, so we go over these right now. You just gotta make sure, given what you do, given what we do, that we make sure we do everything, yeah. you know, so Our we don't get ourselves in hot water or Sergeant you. Sergeant Pittman is. Where's all the stuff that was in my truck? So we had an officer grab it. They're gonna run it over here. So no, okay, they're gonna grab it. Now, but no. too? Yeah, they grabbed the meds. Right. So you asked them to grab all the rules of chew. Yeah, they grabbed the, They pretty much grabbed everything. They grabbed bags out, and then they grabbed chew, right. and then the. Uh, yeah, I have a whole rat or a whole can of chew. I just barely bought. The only time he ever mentioned Donnie was when he hinted that Donnie might be exaggerating his injuries. That seemed on the scene like. That guy was just, in my opinion, playing it off. In my opinion. Yo. Which one, the? The one that, because seriously, we were only like that far apart. Oh. And it rolled forward. And I was trying to put it in reverse, but it just would not go into gear at all. Right. So that's when I told her, hey, pull your car forward, because my truck's not working. Biggest thing that sucks is I put so much fucking time and effort into my career, and then something stupid like this yeah. is more than likely gonna fuck me and lose my retirement. And where'd you say all the bags went that were in my truck? Um, I work at the hospital at night. How about the hospital? It sounds like my bag was open in the hospital. Because they're, they're with, with an officer. They're with an officer. So I might have to drive up there to grab all What's that. that? No, I'm going to go up there and I'll grab it. When he talked to his mother, he confessed about the incident where he trapped a man between two vehicles. And arrested for DUI. What? I ended up getting to a rear and fender bender. And they said they smelled alcohol on me. So I went from there. 
and because there was an injury, it's class A misdemeanor, so I'm being booked into Weber County Jail. So you rear-ended somebody in Hartman? Mm-hmm. Well, they said they were. During a lengthy investigation, Officer Cagle showed no concern for the man he injured and blood was drawn from him nearly 2.5 hours after the accident. It was later discovered that Officer Cagle had a troubled history while serving with the Ogden Police Department. He had undergone five counseling sessions due to various issues including low productivity, incompetence in handling service calls, neglecting to maintain a police canine, and being involved in three preventable accidents. One of these accidents involved hitting a pedestrian named Danny, who luckily only suffered minor injuries. Cagle was charged with aggravated assault, a third-degree felony, and a misdemeanor for negligently operating a vehicle with a blood alcohol level of 0.05 or higher resulting in injury. He was detained without bail. How many more years you got left then? Huh? How many more years you got left then? Uh, seven. Okay. That's why I'm stressed now. I'm so close. Yeah. I'm hoping I can get a decent lawyer to help me out somehow. Salt Lake has no leniency at all, though, so we're probably going to be like, you're out. Cagle still seems to be on paid administrative leave, but of course he's entitled to due process, so this case is far from concluded. Donnie plans to file a lawsuit against Officer Kegel and probably the Salt Lake City Police Department. The confusion gradually faded as I realized that this individual was attempting to take my life. I'll make sure to keep you informed when all of that unfolds, but until then, be sure to keep an eye on Theodore Danny's channel for the most recent updates as they become public. On April 7th, around 2.22 a.m., was driving through Providence, Rhode Island. Cape Accountability lit a cigarette and was promptly pulled over by a uniformed officer of the Providence Police Department. How are you? Good, good. No in the back seat, right? No, sir. No? Nothing going on. What you up to tonight? Just driving down a public road. What is that? I'm just driving down a public road. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nope. I was just, I thought, I thought you were, I, I, I want, just wanted to make sure it was just a cigarette, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, just a cigarette. Just a cigarette? That's me. Alright. I don't do nothing but cigarettes. No? Alright. Upon arrival, it becomes evident that the stop was merely to check if Cape Accountability was smoking a cigarette. There were no traffic violations or criminal suspicions to justify the stop, rendering it an unlawful detention of Cape Accountability and a breach of his freedom to travel. The initiation of this stop was unwarranted, and at this juncture the officer ought to depart, allowing Cape Accountability to proceed with his activities. Instead, the officer calls for another unit to respond urgently. Nothing crazy in the car, right? I don't think I'm going to answer any more questions. Oh, I'm just asking you a question. I'm not going to answer any. Sorry. Oh, I'm just asking you. It's a, it's a safety thing, you know what I mean? No, like, do you have any weapons in the car? I don't really see why that would be a concern. But, uh, like I said, I'm not going to answer any questions. Sorry, sir. a question, man. Well, I understand that. So, you can't tell me if you have anything illegal in the car? I'm not going to tell you anything at all. Okay. But do you see how that, now that looks? No, I don't. Um, you don't think you don't think that sounds a little sketchy? Nope. No. Three forty-three. I mean, you're you're welcome to inspect my car visibly, whatever you can see. But I have a Fourth Amendment right to my privacy, and I have a Fifth Amendment right to not say anything. So. Well, I'm just. I'm just checking, bro. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I hear you. I asked you if there's anything crazy in the car, and then you said I wish not. It's well, these I'd like to ask you, what have I been pulled over for? I was just making sure you're just smoking a cigarette and it wasn't weed. Yeah, I should, do you mind if I ask? I don't want to hit your foot or anything. Um, so, but yeah, just a cigarette. All set. So you wouldn't consent to a search of the vehicle? No, sir. All right, you got ID on you? Uh, have I been pulled over for like a, a legal reason? I mean, I don't feel like I have to give ID unless I've been suspected of committing a crime, really. I mean, you're in, right now you're Technically, in police custody. You, Am I being detained? Not being detained, no. But you can. You're still required to give your ID. If an officer ever tells you that you are not being detained, 
That is precisely when you should leave. Nothing about this encounter is legal, and in fact, this situation exposes the department and municipality to legal liability. Cape Accountability told me that he regrets two things about this stop. The first was not leaving when the officer confirmed that he was not detained. The second regret immediately follows the first. Not being detained, no, but you can, you're still required to give your ID. Oh, well, you can have my ID. I mean, are you asking for it or? Yeah, if you don't mind. Sure. I mean, it's the same as the plate. You can, oh, crap. There you go. You don't got any warrants or anything like that, right? Not that I know of, sir. Have you ever been locked up? Uh, I'm not going to answer any more questions at this point. Sorry. I mean, I'm going to find out in a second anyway. Sure, go ahead. You can find out whatever you Without a legal obligation to present your ID to the police, the decision is entirely yours whether to provide it or not. This stop represents a serious infringement on Cape Accountability's Fourth Amendment rights and his second mistake was voluntarily handing over his ID to the officer. The officer proceeds to run the ID and the two engage in casual conversation as they wait. Go over there. Six? Six cruisers. Oh, was really? something going on? Yeah, maybe half hour yeah, ago? Was, oh, no, it was like, yeah. That was, there was something, a little, a little something going on. I heard somebody killed somebody and wrapped him in plastic wrap and stuck him in the fridge. Something like that. Dude. Something like that? Crazy, crazy things going on. That's why, I'm, that's why we do, we're doing the things we're doing, you know what I mean? Please be aware that residing in a high crime neighborhood or a nearby murder does not authorize an officer to pull you over, demand your identification, and search your vehicle unless they have specific articulable reasons, rather than just a suspicion, that you or your vehicle were engaged in criminal activity. As the second officer arrives at the scene, the interrogation begins anew. Oh man, where do you live? Uh, I think it says it on my license, actually. You live in Massachusetts? Yeah, my, my plates are registered in Mass, I think, so. No, no, but you live in Massachusetts, though? Uh, I'm not going to answer your question, sorry. All right, well, you, th I mean, this is, a, this is a high crime area, and, and my partner is seeing you idling over here. You don't live here, so, I mean, what's the point of you being here idling in the car? Yeah. I mean, I have seen you circling around this area for quite some time. It just kind of seems weird. Now I have to talk to two police officers from two different directions. Right. Is this... Which one would you rather talk to? Some sort of tactic? I mean, it's not really a tactic, but which one would you rather talk to? Well, I'm not going to talk to either one of you, so... Talking to me right now? I am. I'm not going to answer your question, so. Okay. So. I mean, that, thanks. I, I, that's just the weird part. You know what I mean? Do you have family here? Any friends? Am I trespassing or doing something illegal right now? No, uh, but I mean, are you just saying a lot of No, answers. okay. Well, I mean, am, am I being detained for some lawful reason? He's or asking is, a pretty reasonable question. Is this just like a fishing expedition to see if I have committed some crime or if I have some sort of violation? I mean, if I got pulled over and a cop was asking me these questions, and I wasn't doing anything wrong, I wouldn't be responding like the way you are. Oh, well, um, sir, I I feel bad for you. Do you? I do. How come? You took an oath to uphold the Constitution, and you should stand behind every single right. For it's just general conversation. Him asking you if you have family around here is just general conversation. I'm not looking to get into, con into a conversation right now, so. Okay. So. For the military? Sir? I'm not going to answer any questions, sir. I'm just trying to have a conversation, to be honest. I hear you. I'm sure you gentlemen have much bigger things going on in the city of Providence tonight, so... I'm just going to... try to, you know, prevent much bigger things in the city of Providence tonight, you know what I mean? Sure, well, I mean... I don't really think you guys can ascertain that there's anything big going on here. No, sure. but like I said, you know. Did my license come back clean? High crime I'll area. Like, Thanks. High crime neighborhood. You're from Massachusetts, idling in a high crime area neighborhood. You know who brings most of the trouble into Providence? People from Massachusetts. Was I idling? I mean, you're idling right now, so I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you were. You know? I, I'm idling because you pulled me over. Someone pulled me over. That's why I'm idling right oh, you're here. moving? <laughs> In perhaps the most bizarre part of the video, the first officer comes back, stating that Cape Accountability's license is suspended and strangely, promptly lets him go. The reason behind this decision is unclear, but Cape Accountability departs while the officers remain anonymous. 
There you go. License is suspended, so you probably should get that squared away. It's suspended? It is. Yeah, we'll check on that. Well, we just did so. Okay. All right, buddy, have a good night. You too. Thanks, guys. The primary problem is that it doesn't appear that these officers are aware that this whole interaction was illegal and goes against the fundamental principles of freedom. I doubt individuals in the late 1700s would have tolerated this kind of policing. It certainly contradicts the ideals upon which this country was founded. Thanks for watching our video on three cases of corrupt cops ambushing innocent men. Lawsuit. Your support is crucial in spreading awareness about these injustices. Don't stay silent. Take action by subscribing to our channel, liking, and sharing this video. Together we can make a difference and hold corrupt officers accountable. Join us in advocating for justice and ensuring the rights of every individual are protected. Subscribe now and let your voice be heard.